I'm Dr. Angela Mackey. I am a general pediatrician here in Rochester, Minnesota. And I think more importantly, since we're doing the Ask the Mayo Mom segment, I am a mom of two um, active boys. Uh, I have a six-month-old and I have a three-year-old. And I have to say that right now I'm living and breathing sleep problems. Um, in my practice, I think the number one question that parents come to me uh, about is about sleep problems that they're having with their young children. Um, and, and that is not the exception in our house as well. Um, the biggest uh, question about, that I get is when can parents start, start sleep training? And is it okay for them to uh, let their, their infants learn to how to self-soothe on their own? And the answer to that is yes, um, absolutely it's okay. And somewhere between four and six months of age is when most pediatricians will say that it's acceptable to, to let them start to self-soothe. After about four to six months of age, there really isn't a reason that they need to eat um, physiologically at night. They don't need it for their brain. They don't need it for their glucose levels. They should be able to go at least eight hours at night um, without feeding. And so the next question that parents have is, is this gonna affect my child emotionally if I allow them to cry a little bit or learn to calm themselves down and put themselves back to sleep? And my, my answer would be, no, it's not going to affect their bond with you at all. It won't affect their emotional connection, it won't affect their development, and we actually have good research um, that that has actually studied this. Um, and I think that can be reassuring, at least to me as a parent as well, to be able to say, you know what, you know, they've studied this, these kids do well, they're just as well attached to their parents, they do as well um, in social settings as other kids. Um, so if it's something that you and your family feels comfortable with, it's completely acceptable to do. And so right now I'm getting up the courage to start that myself with my six month old um, and letting him to put himself back to sleep a little bit more instead of always needing me to kind of come in and console him. Other questions that I get um, are related to sleep are what, what to do with the kid that wakes up at night and wants to come into your bedroom. And I think the first question you need to decide is that's, is that something that you're okay with? Do you want your child to be sleeping in your bed with you? And if that is something that you're comfortable with, then then it can, you can certainly continue to do that. But if, it's, if your goal is to get your child to be able to go back to sleep on their own and stay in their own bed, then there are some some techniques and, and things that we can do to kind of help coach you and your child to get to that point. Um, some things that work really well are, and children in general are using just positive reinforcements and praise and encouragement. When we tend to use negative reinforcements in children, it usually does not work as well for the general outcome that you want. Um, and you, kids will have more negative associations with it. So your child is getting up at night, coming into your bedroom, you can start by maybe making a sticker chart um, and talking to them about every night that you stay in your own bed, um, you could get a sticker and you ultimately are working towards a goal for them. Um, in including your child in those goals and helping them um, to determine things that they're working for could really help with the engagement process being more successful um, long, long term. Some other things you can do is really talk to them before the bedtime happens, before they're tired um, and they have less ability to kind of use coping on their own. Um, so spending time um, talking about it during the daytime saying, let's stay, we're going to practice staying in our bed tonight um, instead of um, waiting until they're overly tired before bedtime. Um, other things that can really help is making sure you're getting your child to bed with a good bedtime routine. Um, now I know just as well as everyone at bedtime is usually pretty chaotic in most houses, but trying to have a regular time that you all start to unwind is really important. Other things that can um, make um, bedtime more difficult is watching a lot of screen time before bedtime. Um, we know that watching screen time such as being on their tablets, com um, computers, video games, or on their TVs can really activate part of the brain and makes it harder for them to relax um, and, and unwind at night. So really trying to, at least the hour before bedtime, no screen time. Also trying to engage in activities that are kind of calming for them. So um, just telling stories or reading books together, um, taking baths and um, having you know quiet music on instead of running around the house, um, playing tag and, um, and having dance parties and stuff like that. Um, trying to um, you know set expectations um, in advance, like I said before, is also really helpful. I've got a question here from one of our uh, viewers. Is 7.30 to 7.45 a good bedtime for a four-year-old? 
Sure. It, um, I think it all depends on what time they are getting up in the morning. So about a, a four-year-old should have about 12 hours of sleep on average um, throughout the day, and that, that's a, a wide spectrum. So normal can be anywhere from 10 um, to 14 hours. And so if they're going to bed at um, 7.30 and they're getting up at 6, 7 o'clock, that seems completely appropriate. I think you have to base it on how your child acts. Are they tired in the morning when they get up? Are they tired throughout the daytime? If that's the case, then maybe moving the bedtime up a little bit. Um, the best way to move the bedtime up is move it up by about 15 minutes every couple nights to get to your goal bedtime. Um, so instead of making a huge adjustment, kids can slowly kind of readjust their, their sleep clock. So this will get better. Um, the first thing you need to do is just be consistent about it. Try not to um, engage her too much when she wakes up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. So keeping the lights low, not trying to smile and play and sing songs and those sort of things if your goal is to try and get her back to bed. Um, the first thing I want to know is, is if the family is comfortable with letting her kind of play in her crib on her own and seeing if she will fall back and sleep. Sometimes it can take very long time. Parents will use kind of progressively letting them be on their own a little bit longer each night, increasing it by about five minutes or so. Some families will do the cold turkey approach where they let them kind of fuss on their own. They'll I'll check on them from the door, make sure that they're okay, and if they're doing fine, they'll leave them alone. I think that's certainly fine approach to do. Whatever you decide to do, if you have a partner that you are um, w that lives at home with you, it would be best to kind of talk together, figure out what your approach is, and then stick to it. I think um, the hardest thing is is in the moment being um, feeling weak and saying, oh, I'm going to go in and, and you know go pick my child up and we're going to go downstairs and stuff like that. So once you kind of break whatever your plan was going forward, um, you kind of have to start all over.